Today, we're going to check out a space SUV. And no, that's not a joke. This SUV has a pretty regular car name. It's called the Dream Chaser, which, to be fair, sounds exactly like the name NASA would give a space SUV. So let's dive in and discover why NASA would even need a space SUV in the first place, and what this spaceship would look like and how it will work on this episode of Super Freaky Science. Since the Space Shuttle was retired in 2011, NASA has been sending packages to the International Space Station in the most basic ways, mainly hopping across the Pacific, visiting Moscow, and paying them a pretty penny to lend their rockets. Yeah, America, the alleged most advanced nation on Earth, actually borrows rockets to reach space. No matter how you look at it, this wasn't what Richard Nixon envisioned when he saw Americans walking on the moon for the first time. Budget cuts are budget cuts, and the American state simply couldn't afford to keep building rockets to go to the moon. Loaning them and buying spaceship tickets was the cheaper option, and they were taken. But it seems NASA doesn't want to go that route anymore and the Dream Chaser may be just one of the first examples of NASA's new dreams. Unlike other space vehicles used by NASA, the Dream Chaser doesn't belong to America. Instead, it belongs to a federal contractor called Sierra Nevada Corporation. Of course, SNC is an American company, so it owes allegiance and sustenance to America first. Right now, the Dream Chaser is the only spacecraft NASA funds that is capable of manoeuvring within the atmosphere. The entire spacecraft is based on a NASA concept from the 1990s that was designed to assist the space shuttles. Now, well, now it's a state-of-the-art space plane with a carbon fibre body and advanced avionics capable of doing things other spacecraft cannot. It's a weird sort of spacecraft because it has proper wings, something we rarely see on spacecraft. It's the first and, at the time of making this video, the only non-capsule private orbital spaceship ever made. And we suspect it will be for some time yet. You're probably wondering, how does this plane take off in the first place? After all, it has normal wings. Would it take off like a plane, or would it take off some other way? The answer is not surprising. The Dream Chaser will be vertically launched atop a rocket, just like a regular capsule. However, where the Dream Chaser is different is that it will land on its own. Yes, you heard that right. The Dream Chaser isn't going to go crashing into the Atlantic. It's going to space and then fly down and taxi down a runway, like a proper plane. This may seem weird to you if you're used to the splashing capsule modus operandi, but NASA has had spacecrafts that can land on Earth since 1972. NASA initially built six of them, and they were called Enterprise, Atlantis, Columbia, Challenger, Endeavour, and Discovery. The last of these spaceships were retired in 2011, when they became too expensive to manage. But let's go back to the actual plane. The basic structure of the plane was built by a company named Lockheed Martin, and afterwards it was developed further by SNC. The Dream Chaser isn't yet done, but it will be soon. It has been scheduled for launch for the first time in late 2021. It will hit the skies aboard the United Launch Alliance Vulcan Centaur rocket that will take off from Florida. After its launch, the spacecraft will carry cargo to and from the International Space Station. It would be, like we've said, an SUV for space, or a space utility vehicle, as NASA's chosen to call it. But that's just NASA's boring old name. You know there has to be more cinematic names, and Sierra Nevada recently announced the name they would call their spacecraft. The very first Dream Chaser will go into the skies will be called Tenacity. Now to the important questions. Will Tenacity carry human beings? When the spaceship was first developed, it was meant to carry human cargo. Sierra Nevada was able to win several rounds of funding from NASA's commercial crew program for the sake of developing tenacity. However, Boeing and SpaceX finally won out. 
The astronaut ferrying contract that would assist NASA in owning its rockets and spacecraft were awarded to Boeing and SpaceX. It was a tough outing for Sierra Nevada. They'd been working on a crewed version of the spacecraft for months, and now they were being told that it would all be for waste. But just two years later, NASA called them back. They may have missed the commercial crew program, but there was something else. And that something else was Commercial Resupply Service, or CRS-2, contract. By then, NASA was convinced of the merits of Dream Chaser, and Sierra Nevada was awarded the contract. According to the terms of the contract, SNC will fly six uncrewed cargo missions to the space station by 2024. But the Dream Chaser was originally made for human cargo. How was SNC able to repurpose the entire thing in two years? Well, they didn't. Or they did, but just not the way you think. According to an SNC spokesperson, they only needed to change about 20% of the entire module to turn it into a cargo ship. Interestingly, SNC hasn't ruled out turning the spaceship into a crew-carrying craft. Since only 20% changes were made to turn it into a cargo ship, turning it back into a crew-carrying ship wouldn't be the most difficult thing in the world. Since the Dream Chaser is set to be a cargo-hauling vehicle, it must be able to carry a lot of payloads. And it does. The Dream Chaser by itself can carry roughly 2,000 pounds. 900 kilograms of supply and cargo on board. If that's not enough, a 16-foot cargo module called the Shooting Star can be attached to the plane. This would give it another 10,000 pounds of carrying ability. Ironically, the Shooting Star is mostly for trash. After the cargo has been offloaded at the station, astronauts will fill the Shooting Star with their trash. As the Dream Chaser re-enters the atmosphere, the Shooting Star will detach and then disintegrate. When the spacecraft sweeps down on Earth's atmosphere, it needs about 10,000 feet of runway to taxi to a full stop. Immediately after the Dream Chaser lands, its back would fall open. Unlike other ships, the Dream Chaser is propelled by a relatively safe propellant, so technicians can approach almost immediately. The Dream Chaser is a fully automated craft, so it doesn't need a pilot to fly. Enough about the Dream Chaser. What about the rockets it's going to hitch a ride on to the sky? The spacecraft is set to hit the skies in 2021. It is expected to launch from and land on Kennedy Space Center, CSC, in Florida. It will rely on the United Launch Alliance to get off the ground and it will take off on ULA's next generation engine, the Vulcan Centaur rocket. However, there are a few problems with that. No one can tell whether the Vulcan rocket will be ready by 2021. The production and testing of the rocket have been moved back several times already. It may happen several more times. In that case, the Dream Chaser would have to hitch a ride on another of ULA's rockets, the Atlas V. Interestingly, NASA may not be the only consumer of SNC's Dream Chaser. SNC has come out to say that they were certainly not depending on NASA for business. They also said that if that was the case, they wouldn't be in business at all. When asked whether Tenacity will get sister ships, the answer from SNC was simple. It all depends on demand. They wanted to have a fleet of dream chasers, but it all depends on the market. And it's easy to ask what market spacecrafts have. After all, it's not like there are lots of people or countries lining up to send parcels to space. However, there are lots of opportunities in spacecraft building. There are rideshare missions, a big international market, and NASA itself. SNC also plan on having astronauts soon, and they've been talking of two ride options. One says SNC will be a taxi mode where SNC provides the crew to fly the ship. And the second is a sort of rental car model where interested parties provide the astronauts that fit aboard the craft. However, this can only happen if SNC gets a crewed version of the Dream Chaser online. We don't think this would be too difficult once the Dream Chaser takes to the sky successfully. It appears that the Dream Chaser will continue to chase the dreams of the stars with loads of tenacities in the next few years. 
Who knows, maybe SNC would even consider turning the space SUV into a commercial craft for space tourism. After all, in space, anything is possible. If you love this video, make sure to like and subscribe. We have more exciting space and science videos like this for you on the channel. We'll see you later.